That's very nice. Uh, you got it all wrong. I need that after the jokes. You have <laughs> How are you about? You sound in a good mood. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm Johnny Carson, your uh, average American with a desk job. Let me explain something. This gentleman standing over here, looking semi-alert, is, uh, <laughs> is an assistant to Mr. Doc Severance, Mr. Shelley Cohen. Doc is off tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, Doc is off and Tommy usually fills in and Tommy is off tonight, so we have Shelley Cohen. I don't understand something. The Gentiles took off a of Rosh Hashanah and we got a guy named Cohen leading the band. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you, Shell. Thank you. All right. Uh, no football this weekend. Oh. That's interesting. Was that the, the women applauding or the men? <laughs> yeah. Doesn't matter to me because, like most Americans, this weekend, I'll be online to see uh, Amazon women on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a big week of Freddie Cordova. You know what Fred likes to do? He likes to rent video cassettes on the weekend. He stands on the corner of Riverside and Alameda <laughs> and rents out the Ma and Pa Kettle films that he directed. <laughs> Just taking it easy. We're in no hurry tonight. You don't have any plans, do you, afterwards? No. Yeah. There's an anniversary today. <laughs> the USA, are you familiar with the USA newspaper? Yeah. Yeah. Celebrating its fifth anniversary today. And you realize since it was founded, the production of multicolored graphs and pie charts has gone up 175%. <laughs> you notice a lot of times in the paper they have these charts and they... <laughs> and graphs. This guy over here desperately trying to help me, but it's not... <laughs> Anyway, what's that? On television, we're in the new season now. Miami Vice premieres tonight uh, for the new season, and I don't want to miss it. I can't wait to see what color socks John Johnson is not wearing. <laughs> is anything coming out right tonight at all? <laughs> California's in the audience tonight. You may be getting, I think, soon. Apparently, there was an overcharge on income tax. What was it? Of a billion dollars to Californians. True. And it's being refunded to Californians. They overpaid in one giant mailing. The average check's going to be $200. Or you have a choice. <laughs> you can either have that money or go for what's in the box that Jay is holding. <laughs> oh, no. now, here's, the... here's the strangest news item today. This, this is true. I read it. I don't understand it. There is a new video cassette on the market that instructs you on how to hook up your VCR. <laughs> now think of that. How the hell do you play it <laughs> if you don't know how to hook up the machine? Does that make any sense to you? Oh, no. You go on, you get a cassette, it's how to hook up your VCR, and it's not hooked up. <laughs> Something's crazy. What are you going to do with no football this weekend? Sports fans are absolutely desperate. They're, they're even turning to amateur sports, like the Dodgers. <laughs> yeah. The Los Angeles Rams are going ahead with their games anyway. They don't expect, I guess, the usual attendance and fans. The human wave is going to be a guy named Hal. <laughs> These are what are called semi-amusing jokes. They're not... <laughs> they're not big because we've got a long show, and I found sometimes if I come out and I do jokes, it get big reactions. The audience just gets tired. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously, that's not going to happen to you. <laughs> now, the networks are going crazy to try to figure out things to fill in on the sports. A lot of amateur sports. For example, I think uh, ABC is running a Monday night fly casting from Toluca Lake. <laughs> and NBC is gonna do a remote from the Latvian city of Schmink for the annual running of the goats. 
Now, there is no football this weekend, but the Dolly Parton Show debuts. So it's... <laughs> well, it's kind of a... It's kind of a trade-off. Instead of fullbacks, you get to see full fronts. So... <laughs> have to sit and go like this. I mean, to try to lead them. If it's dying, it's dying. Oh, it is. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> Shelly, he's so worried for me. He's trying to help me. He says, he's dying out there. <laughs> There's a book that recently came out. Somebody sent me a copy. It is by Tip O'Neill, who is the former Speaker of the House, who has retired. And it's an interesting book. I kind of hate that word. It's a rather provocative book. And it's called man of the house. Now, there's an anecdote in the book that is rather strange, and Tip O'Neill relates this anecdote in the book. He says he once told the president, President Reagan, that his desk, Reagan's desk, was once owned by Grover Cleveland. And Reagan said, yes, well, I, I played him in the movies. And Tip O'Neill said, no, Mr. President, you, paid, you played Grover Alexander, the ball player. Now, what has me worried? Do you think Reagan nominated Bork to the Supreme Court because he liked his work with Mindy? <laughs> I'm going I'm to hook up my VCR and check that tonight. I just want the damn clock to work. <laughs> 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock. <laughs> right? You too? <laughs> Four years has been 12 o'clock, just blinking. <laughs> I press every button on that, 12 o'clock. <laughs> Iran still denies that that ship in the Gulf that we captured was carrying mines. Today, they said it was a garbage scow from Long Island. <laughs> And those were trash cans. <laughs> Go figure. Okay. Good night. All right. Good night. We had a little a different show tonight. Uh, one of our guests we did not announce because we wasn't sure he, he was out here to do something and uh, possibly he said he might drop, uh, drop over tonight and I didn't want to announce it last night because at these prices, we're not allowed to... <laughs> not allowed to give you the actual name of the merchandise, but... He is here tonight, and along with David Brenner, who hasn't been with us for a while. Right. David is here. <laughs> and a gentleman who uh, has not done television for a number of years is back with a brand new show that debuts tomorrow night called J.J. Starbuck, Mr. Dale Robertson. <laughs> hey, here you are. We'll be here. Has that been growing? Yes, it's been growing. Look at the size of it now. Somebody one brought week. in a little plant here about, what, 10 days ago? Yeah. It was about this way, and it's been growing like a weed. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> yes, I do know. Take it out. <laughs> uh, tonight, we have so uh, somebody I... Well, I guess I can mention who's going to join us now. He's not going to come out this moment, but he's going to come out in a few minutes. Mr. Don Johnson's in town from Miami Vice. <laughs> First, I have something I think is pretty important in this great country of ours. How many of you remember the children's story of Peter Rabbit when you right. were a kid? Yeah. How many of you remember the names of Peter Rabbit's friends? Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, right? Okay, mm. that's what we were all taught as children. Right. That was uh, almost sacred, right? Peter, as you know, was a baby rabbit whose feet went, what sound did they make? Lippity lippity when he walked and his mother warned him not to go into the garden because his father was caught there by a farmer named Mr. McGregor remember right. and baked into a pie now that book was written by British author Beatrice Potter in 1901 this is a reprint of the original book and it's charming and the stories and drawings have become a children's classic now folks 
a few weeks ago, uh, an organization called Ladybird Books in England announced they have updated and simplified Mrs. Potter's story to appeal to a wider audience, today's children, and they're publishing the new version under the same title. Now, in the new simplified Peter Rabbit, which is not this, Peter's feet don't go lippity-lip anymore. He just hops. Mm. Yes, yeah. you're right. They want the children, apparently, to understand mm -hmm. better today, so they're taking out. Peter's friends Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail? Out. Out. <laughs> they're out of here. They're history. There's no mention of Peter's father's untimely demise? No. That's right. Also, the original drawings, they're all gone in the book. They were kind of quaint. Mm -hmm. they, they replaced them with, with, by photographing fat rabbit puppets. Oh, yes. terrible. All right, the publisher says if the new version of, is popular, they're going to update other children's stories. No, I, no, there's something yeah. wrong here. Something oh, wrong. I grew up on that stuff. It formulated the person I am today. <laughs> I don't know what that's... <laughs> lippity, lippity. Lippity, lippity. I don't know what that says, but those were charming, wonderful little fairy tales. So we got to thinking about that. Because we needed some material for this spot. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to get to Mother Goose soon. Yeah. And all the charming Mother Goose stories are going to take and they're going to update for today's kids. We have some versions of the way they may go. Let's hope not, right? Right. Would you like to hear some of these? <laughs> yes, we would. Mary had a BMW. <laughs> its paint was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, she drove her car for show. She parked the Beamer at school one day. That was against the rule. They hotwired the car and sold the parts. That Mary, she be a fool. <laughs> Boy, terrible. It might be more amusing, but it's right. a little, little too hip. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, we could knock you down with SDI. <laughs> there wasn't a woman who lived in a shoe. Do you remember that sure. one? Charming. Yep. Look at the new version. Possible new version. There wasn't a woman who lived in a Reebok. <laughs> she had so many children, she found herself in hock. So in order to buy her kids some supper, she told she sold her footwear as a rustic fixer-upper. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Zippo! <laughs> All right, let's just try to look. All of these are not gems. Well, these are just suggestions. We're not, we're not bound by this. And you're not bound by it. Old Mother Hubbard. Do you remember the original yep. version? Let's we'll see if you remembered. Lived in the cupboard. Oh, no, went to the cupboard. <laughs> Old Mother Hubbard lived in a shoe. Old Mother Hubbard went, went to, to the, the cupboard. cupboard to get her poor dog a bone. Oh. When she got there, there the, the cupboard, cupboard was bare, there. and so the poor dog got none. none. That's right. right. Lived now, what is it the, now? Lived in the cupboard. <laughs> It's been a long time. Well, <laughs> I wasn't reading these books yesterday. Well, that's you know? right. Well, old Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard to get her port bill a snack. Her poor pit bull a snack. <laughs> when she got there, the cupboard was bare, so he ate her legs on the way back. <laughs> okay. Let's see if you remember Hickory Dickory Dock. No, no, no. The Hickory original. Dickory Dock. The mouse ran up the clock. The struck, clock struck one. The clock struck one, and the other one was seriously injured. Okay. All right. Hickory Dickory Dock. Oral phoned up his flock. I need your bread, or I'll soon be dead with a Hickory Dickory Crock. <laughs> Little Miss Muffet. Now, I love that one. Sat on her, eating her curds in a way. Right, Along right. came a spider and said, but beside her and said, what a good, what is that? What's the end of that? Scared Miss Muffet away. Scared Miss Muffet away. Here's the new version. Little Miss Muffet sat on a bar stool, <laughs> drinking her margarita. Along came a spider and sat down beside her and offered to share her fajita. <laughs> Mary, Mary... Quite contrary. Here's the new version. Surely, surely, mind a whirly. How does your karma grow? Is it true since your lives as those dead pharaoh's wives, you've been Larry Curly and Mo? All right, we've got time for one more? Yes, sir. All right. 
<laughs> yes, sir. Rockabye baby. Rockabye baby on the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall. And we'll sue the pants off the manufacturer for negligent construction, <laughs> reckless endangerment of human life, and strict liability punitive damages in excess of $5 million. Yeah. Performance. What? I know we don't have time, but I got to do one more. Jack and Jill. Jim and Jessica. <laughs> Went up the hill to check into the Marriott. Tim lost his job, and Tammy sobbed, We're not Ozzy and Harriet. Okay, <laughs> we'll take a break. We'll be right back. One of, the, one of the hottest shows uh, in television the past couple of years has been Miami Vice. And one of the main reasons is because of it, one of its stars, Mr. Don Johnson. Nice of you to drop by. Well, thanks. Last thanks time we saw each other, we were back for the U.S. Open watching the tennis while it was raining. Yeah, that was uh, that was quite a that was quite a day there. Yeah, and we're lucky to get through them. Yeah, you said you might be out here, and we kind of left it like this because you said, "Well, I might be there, and I'm doing something. If I can, I'll drop over." It was nice of you. So we well, didn't want to a... we didn't want a billboard in case the last minute. Yeah, you got a better offer. It's a... <laughs> <laughs> you know the money we know. pay on this. Uh, well, you know it's it's so tough to get to uh, to L.A. from from uh, Miami when when we're working the kind of hours we're working yeah. down there. What do you put, what time do you start on that show? I mean, you, you must well, work a 10 or 12 we, hour day. Yeah, we start usually around, oh, seven, 6.30 or 7 on Mondays, and then by, um, by Friday night, we're working from 6, and, 6 at night till 6 in the morning. So and you do a lot of interior, you do a lot of locations, you do all, all kinds of stuff. That's a, that's a tough thing. We state. do it all. We yeah. do it all, yeah. Now, somebody told me you were in Miami, then you were out here, then you were in Philadelphia. What, <laughs> what were you doing in Philly? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I, I went to Philly to... Um, Do people from Philadelphia like you to call it Philly? Not, if you call San Francisco, Frisco. Yeah. San Francisco does not... People don't like you to call it Frisco. They say it's San Francisco. Yeah. Yeah, so I wonder if Philadelphia... I have no idea same. about that. I know that they... I know it's a city of brotherly love, but they weren't feeling too brotherly that night. I'll tell you that. I was, I was there to do a, um, a benefit for uh, the wives and, and children of, of uh, uh, police officers and firemen killed in the line of duty. Right. And a very worthy yeah. charity. And, um, and uh, so I, I wanted to go there and lend my support. And on the plane there, I looked at the... Um, prepared remarks that, uh, that uh, one of my uh, associates had written for me. And, and I noticed that they were very dry and didn't, yeah. didn't have much humor to them at all. So I, so I started thinking, well, where am I going to get some, some jokes to, to yeah. liven this thing up a little bit? I tried to call you. You did? Yeah. Oh, I'd have been happy to help. Your line was busy. Yeah. And uh, so I, I called a couple more people. And uh, I, finally, I finally called uh, my buddy Bob Hope. And... Uh, Bob was very helpful, and uh, last minute he... He gave you jokes for he, Philadelphia? Yeah, yeah. He gave me, he gave me some Pope jokes. Oh, that's right, the Pope was yeah. here. Some Pope yeah. jokes. Pope jokes, yes. Did you try them out? They've, uh, <laughs> I'll say I did. <laughs> <laughs> I died in Philly, oh, you're John. Kidding. I, you're kidding. Know, I, uh, Nothing? No, no, it was, like, uh, it was like talking to an oil painting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you know what that's Give like me, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool, cool, oh, no, I'm cool. Just, just, I, I'm, I'm sure being cool. a comedian, well, I've experienced give me a couple of the, oh, Give me one of the jokes that Hope gave you and tell it, and let's see what happened. Oh, you got, you got Zippo? Nothing. Not only do I die once in Philadelphia, I'm going to die again that's here. That's okay. All right. But you've set Shall it I up. Do this? You set it up that you died. Oh. That's all right. Okay, so um, uh, we were, it was right after the Pope had arrived in, uh, in Miami, and so I said... Um, you know, I just uh, I just got in from Miami yes, uh, today, and uh, and uh, you know the Pope got there yesterday. I think he was showing off. He arrived an hour before his plane. <laughs> no, no, 
no coaching, no coaching. No, no, no. no. I, I learned that from you. No, no, no beg, no begging. No, no. You take it or you don't, but you can't beg. Okay, that's, all right. Shall so I try another one? That's not bad. Now that was, you know, that got about about a four on the meter. A four? It's not a what well, Listen, I would have settled for a two in Philadelphia. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's one. see. What, okay. Um, uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, you know the. Um, the Pope flies one, one step above first class. Uh, all of his stewardesses have wings, real ones. Well, that's, See, that, now that's, that, that's more like what I got there. Yeah. Nobody booed in Philadelphia. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, we have a very selective group here. They, <laughs> what are these this group critics knows, here? This I group mean... knows comedy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, apparently. You want to try one again. more of these? <laughs> What? Now, now that you humiliated yourself anyway. Uh, shall we uh, try one more? Sure, just, just, why not? I mean, I've dug this hole. I'm going to go. I'm going right. to keep I'm right a, on I, going. I enjoy I this. also Tell learned that truth. from you. I enjoy you. this. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, now, you know, the Pope said he wanted to see um, a lot of poor people while he was here. Well, I told him he should have come on April 15th. <laughs> That's, yeah, there you go. That's not so bad. You know why it's always more difficult for an actor than a professional comedian to get laughs? They expect the comedian to get laughs. They're sitting looking at you, and they don't expect it, so by the time you've told it, they're still looking at you. You see? Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, I, I would like to think that I think these, I think these might have been cardboard cutouts that, yeah. I, was, that well, I was dealing with. No, they're very nice. Anyway, you were very brave to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also very foolish. Yes, <laughs> no kidding. S stick with us a couple of minutes. We're going to come right back. <laughs> Premieres tonight, right? Yeah. Season premiere. Yeah, the show premieres yeah. tonight. We'll it's... talk about that in a moment, and I understand you sneaked a clip in there earlier today. We'll show a little bit of uh, uh, what, what you're going to see on Miami this season. Yeah, I sneaked a clip into uh, Bobby. You know, I can't go by a drugstore nowadays without seeing the tabloids. You know, the ones that they keep oh, next. I won't oh, mention yeah. any names, but they're next to the uh, AAA batteries and the Tic Tacs. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and boy, you were in there every other week. Yeah, isn't that... I thought uh, maybe you want to set some of the records straight. Now, one of them has said that you were... You're, date, you're dating this woman, then you're dating that woman, and so forth. Yeah. The truth of the matter is, yes. you do That's a series... That's what we want on this yeah. show, truth. Yeah, truth. Uh, I noticed that. That's right. <laughs> you, you don't have... Uh, when you're doing a series, you don't have time for dating. Mm -hmm. That's a thing of the past. Uh, it's a memory. It's a... Uh, John, please, a, please, come on. <laughs> <laughs> come you're not going to buy that, No, I'm you? not buying no, that. I didn't think so. Well... <laughs> <laughs> are you, as they best. say, playing the field? Uh, uh, yeah, I am, uh, I am definitely playing the field. I am... Um, <laughs> No, you're, Maybe you're, not after tonight. No, you can't, you never know. can't queue up outside now. <laughs> so you're not seeing anybody in particular? No, no. I, okay. I have a few young ladies that I see upon occasion that are, <laughs> that are uh, you know, warm and understanding. Pals. Yeah, pals. Buddies. It's always nice to have pals. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> then, then there was a rumor you were going to remarry your, get remarried your ex-wife. Yeah, uh, uh, actually, I'm not remarrying my ex-wife. I'm remarrying your ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless you. <laughs> Thank you. Here's some. Here's some. Good. Good. Let's keep I sending a, those checks. I have a right? car. I'll take you there right tonight. Uh, okay. So that now there's another rumor going. No, on. no, that's just not true. Okay. I, I, All right. I'm, I'm not marrying your ex-wife or, or yours. my ex-wife. Somebody Once said you know you lived on a private island off the coast of Florida to avoid crowds. Oh, that was one thing I read. No. Not that's, true. Yeah, that's absolutely false. Okay. I invite several crowds on to the <laughs> okay. Are you basically kind of a private guy? We've met socially. We don't know each other well. We've never had a cookout, you know, at our house or anything, or a, a sleepover, but... Uh, are you, <laughs> but are, I've always wanted to. <laughs> are you comfortable with large crowds of people? I am not. I'm, I'm really not comfortable with large crowds of people. I, I, get, I get kind of nervous. Um, funny things seem to happen when I get in large crowds of people. I mean, uh, I've seen, you know, I'm t trying to be as modest as I can be here. I've seen other stars uh, uh, step out in the crowds and they seem to be fine. With, yeah. with me, they, they want to take something home. And it usually, <laughs> it usually is a part of my person. Really? Uh, so, no, that they like you, they, they, want, it, they want a touch. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I really enjoy the, um, the, I mean, part of the reason that you get into this business in the first place is, you know... Uh, For the recognition. Yeah, the yeah. adulation and the recognition. Um, the, the, um, the thing that, one of my little pet peeves about it is that people, when I'm working a, a lot, I, I'm very 
I'm there 150 percent, right. and I'm into my work. And and sometimes when you're going back and forth from the from the motorhome to the to the set, uh, people will be by, and they and they get incensed, and sometimes can be very very rude and hurtful yeah. if you don't stop and 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 yeah. uh, uh, chat with them for five or ten minutes. Sometimes and, your mind is in a yeah. different. Yeah. And frankly, there just isn't time. I mean, the the company doesn't allow it, and yeah. uh, and uh, we I I try to do as much as I can, but. Um, it's just sometimes there's, it's just yeah. impossible, and they can they can really be um, cold. They can be cold, John. Yeah. I mean, people, people can be cold. <laughs> what do you got coming up on the show this year that's different? You've, you've changed the styles a little bit, although I know you get tired about people talking about the style fashions that you guys wear. Uh, you let the hair go a little longer this year, didn't you? Know? Yeah, well, that's part. I mean, part of the thing is, and the the, uh, the style and the and the fashion uh, uh, sense that came out of the show, which we're all very proud of, yeah. mind you, but it really came out of a. Uh, I'm an actor. I create a character, right. and this character is an undercover cop. And undercover cops change their appearance from time to time. And in in our show, uh, what was uh, what was picked up on so readily was that um, we didn't really redefine anything. We were just contemporary. Right. And uh, by that, we were contemporary in our in our dress and in our in uh, and we uh, story wise and uh, integrity wise for the characters, we used the confiscated money and clothes right. and cars and houses and boats and things uh, uh, from the drug dealers and uh, and uh, for the undercover cops. Yeah. Now, when we started wearing that stuff and our personal sense of style, that got picked up. And yeah. I mean, blown completely out yeah. of proportion. So, th so that it got to be a thing where I, I couldn't I couldn't go anywhere <laughs> without, you know, go somewhere in a, in a pair of jeans. And it was like, Oh my God! He's wearing jeans. <laughs> Let's hang him. <laughs> like, like a big deal. Yeah. So it was. Uh, it, it was. Yeah. And all of that is just to, you know to to protect the characters. Sure. You know, and try and stay true to him. So I, in an effort to do that, I let the hair grow a little longer yeah, this year. Yeah. Why not? We got a little clip. Uh, yeah. From one of the episodes. You want to you want to tell us what we're going to see here? Well, this is a this is a clip that uh, this is one of the shows coming up in uh, I think two or three episodes down mm -hmm. the line, and it's um, Crockett is. Uh, accidentally uh, shoots a young boy in the uh, in the opening uh, and it's and it's um, and it starts to work on him and it starts to be something that uh, that uh, stresses him out to the max and yeah. uh, and he won't uh, he's been trying to deal with the psychiatrist but can't and, right. and that's that pretty much sets it up. Okay, <clears throat> watch the monitors. Here's an excerpt from Miami Vice. Where were you yesterday? Took a ride to Atlanta to see my kid. You didn't go. It's funny, that's what my ex-wife said. You two been talking? You in or out? You said I could have a couple of days off. I took them. I should have called, I didn't. I'm sorry. I'm back. If you're off the street. You can't do that. So is this the way the department stands behind me? A few self-appointed community spokesmen raise a little dust and I'm on my tail for the winter. Is that the idea? Department cleared you. So, I'm off the hook. With the department, but not with the community. Not with yourself, Sonny. DeLello called you. What does he want me to say? What do you want me to say? I'd like to see you up there. I shot the kid. I shot him, he may die, it was my gun, I can't pull the bullet back in there. And there's nothing that you say, or anybody says, or no shriek is gonna change that! Yeah. Yeah. You're a good actor. <laughs> yeah. It's a good scene. Look forward to seeing the new season. Look, I know you can't stay. It was nice of you to drop over here. I know you're in town to do a few things for with your, your involvement in some other projects through yeah. your, your company. So you yeah. head back from Miami when, Monday? Uh, yeah, Monday night I'll be heading back. I want to say I want to say hi to my terrific crew okay. down in Florida. Wow. Hi guys. Hello crew. Yeah. Lord Lauderdale. Yeah. Don, thanks for coming.
which you all know is a fine comedian, David Brenner. David Brenner has been a frequent guest on The Tonight Show. Then he went away for a while and did his own late night show. But now, like a prodigal son, he's returned. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to be appearing at Slippery Rock, uh, Slippery, uh, Slippery Rock University <laughs> in Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania. And then at the Sunrise Theater in Sunrise, Florida on the 27th of yeah. September. Would you welcome Mr. David Brenner? Thank you. Well, I can't tell you how happy I am to be back on the show. At, uh, when I found out about it, it was such a thrill. And, but then something weird started to happen. Here's, you know, well, you know how when you're young, you disillusion yourself about so many things? One of which is you really believe, and I think we're all this way, that when you see something happening to an old person, it's never, ever going to someday happen to you. You know what I'm talking about? Like, remember when your grandmother would come out on the porch and, and wave goodbye, then she'd stop waving and the bottom of her arm would keep flapping for like 10 minutes? And... <laughs> I once walked behind my grandmother, I got a slap on the forehead. I thought someone hit me with a warm fish. So anyway, so when I got the call, I usually, or almost always, get up in the morning bright-eyed. I literally leap out of bed, I jump in the shower, I get dressed real fast, I shoot out into the streets, I'm moving through the neighborhood, Mr. Energy. After I got the call that I'm going to do The Tonight Show, I start getting nostalgic. I start thinking about the first time I was ever on television, which was The Tonight Show. And all of a sudden, I realized it was 16 years ago. And that's all I could think about for days. 16 years. And I was getting, like, old. I get up in the morning, like, uh-oh. <laughs> you know, it, it's starting to happen. I'm even walking like my grandmother. She always looked like she was sneaking up on someone. <laughs> so, well, and, and by the way, don't think I'm making fun of senior citizens. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm sponsoring a bill I'm trying to get in Congress. I'll tell you about it, because I think it's important, not because I thought of it. I believe, in my opinion, that our automobile manufacturers do not take senior citizens in mind when they make new cars. Now, you know, a certain percentage of new cars are purchased by senior citizens, and they know the exact percentage because you put your age on the application. So I believe that our automobile manufacturers ought to produce a certain percentage of brand new automobiles keeping the senior citizen in mind and make these cars where the windshield is underneath the steering wheel. <laughs> There's no reason. I got that idea in Miami. Did you ever stand on Collins Avenue, you see these cars whipping by, little tufts of white hair in them? <laughs> Looks like rabbits are driving. So anyway, so I started feeling old, and, and I got on my manager's nerves. I was acting old, so, and he's young, too. And he said, come on, David, don't be so stupid. You don't get old overnight. You don't go to bed young and wake up the next morning old. It's a whole process. It takes weeks. <laughs> and then he started bugging me. Go to a doctor. Get examined. Go to a doctor. And not because he likes to bug me. He knows me. You have to bug me to go to a doctor. I hate going to doctors. I hate being examined. I hate doctors. I hate, especially when they put on that rubber glove. <laughs> Because you realize in a few seconds, you're going to know exactly how a puppet feels. <laughs> you know, the next, time, the next time you go to a doctor and he does that to you, you're going to think about me and laugh. <laughs> and he's not going to know why the hell you're laughing. <laughs> or worse than that, if you're a doctor and you do that to a patient and you laugh... <laughs> So anyway, I went to the doctor, and I'm glad I did. He examined me, and he told me I'm still young, I'm still healthy, everything's fine. It was all in my head, it was mental, it's so stupid. And... You know something? I don't think that very, 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 very fat people should be allowed to ride on mopeds. <laughs> I'm serious, and I'll tell you why. Because it's frightening. You don't see the moped. <laughs> you hear this motor, and you see this person whipping around the street. Now, I'm not just talking about people who are overweight. I'm talking about the special one in a million heavy duty number. I wouldn't make fun of fat people. Besides, you're not supposed to call people fat. There's an organization now. They want to be called um, pudgy. Well, I'm talking industrial pudge. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I mean? Like, like the kind of person buys high heels, wears them once in their slippers. Biggies, you know what I'm saying? Big O's. Right? They get off your bicycle and the seat's missing. And you don't want it back, you know? 
<laughs> right? They step out of a cab at the airport and all the automatic doors in the whole city fly open. <laughs> biggies, you know, biggies. Oh, there was a woman on a plane with me a few weeks ago. I never saw anything that big that wasn't pulling a wagon. <laughs> Really, she had to be born on a plane. There's no way they got her in any of those doors. And a flight attendant says to me, you're sitting next to her. I said, everyone on a plane is sitting next to her. I never saw anything like this. Hey. They, had to, they had to put all these extra belts around her. They put belts around the airplane. We kept flying in a circle until someone finally pushed her in the middle of the plane. Just... Well, I didn't say anything. It's not nice. And besides, you don't have to say anything, right? Everyone knows when it's time to lose weight. You know when it's time to lose weight. No one has to tell you, right? You know. Like, if you get on an up escalator and it starts going down. <laughs> or if you put on a pair of corduroys and all the ridges disappear. <laughs> Right? Or when you walk and you hear that swishing sound a corduroy makes, and you're naked, come on, trim it down. Thank you. Uh -huh. Welcome back. Hey, it's great being back. Am I really getting hung up on time here tonight? We're running long, aren't we? Yeah, I've noticed that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, good to have you back here. It's fabulous to be back here. Can I stay even after the show closes? Sure, you can I'll stay here. I'll just sit here. Do a few more minutes or no, something? No, just alone. I just want to sit here again. <laughs> Great. We're coming right back. My next guest you all know, Dale Robinson. Dale Robinson has been around for a few years. Been very successful in both motion pictures and television. He's starring in a show called J.J. Starbuck premieres uh, this Saturday, September 26th at 9.30 on NBC. I think the regular time is going to be Tuesdays at 9. Would you welcome, please, Mr. Dale Robertson. Good to see you again. Thank you, thank you. I I'll... enjoyed David very much. I remember when you used to make your living that way. <laughs> <laughs> What got you out of your ranch in Oklahoma to come back and do a television series? I thought you'd kind of said, hey, enough of Hollywood. Well, just did gone you ever away. hear about the oil industry? Yeah. Uh, you hear about them banks going under? Yeah. Meet one. <laughs> <laughs> so he came back to television, huh? Yeah. Well, when, you, yeah. when you were working out here, you, you were never part of the, uh, what you call, I guess, the Hollywood scene much. You were, you were a rather private no. individual. No, I soon as You I were got... out here in the days when that was considered the thing to do. Go here, be seen. Yeah. I lived out in the valley, way out in the valley. Yeah. And we always had horses, and I just, uh, I'd come to work and go home, and that was about it. I, it's not that I don't like the people in Hollywood. I do very much. Yeah. I think they've been very much maligned by the news media. When you stop and think, 33,000 people in this industry, yeah. and the only ones you read about in a negative way is a handful. You know, that I, I like it, but I just... I'm about that far from being a recluse, if you want to know really? the truth. I, I get nervous in big crowds, and I get claustrophobia. And... Yeah, but as they say, when you're out here in, in this, this atmosphere, there's certain things that you're supposed to go to, charity <laughs> events or whatever. Well, people... charity events, yeah. You know, we used to go to them there. They, I told all them husbands one time, if we got together, really, and counted up what we spend on shoes for the ladies, dresses, jewelry, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> they rent the hall, uh -huh. you buy all that food, pay the orchestra and everything else. If we forgot all of that and just took the money and sent it straight to the charity, I believe they'd come out a whole lot better off. Lots I know of I, I don't know. I don't know why they don't do that. You're right. Yeah. And you wouldn't have to eat that hotel food either. No, that's sit right. Sit through the speeches, just give the money to charity. You know, I, 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 that, that society thing over there is really a kick, you know. Uh, now with these man-made diamonds, I'll guarantee you there's some of the most frustrated women in the world over there. Do you suppose that's real? I know it's yeah. not real. You it can't. couldn't be real. No, no yeah. way. And you can't tell anymore. <laughs> no. Yeah. Even somebody, the jewelers can't Somebody tell. dug this picture out. Now, this must have, speaking of the old days of Hollywood, you remember seeing this? No. <laughs> wow, I'll let you. Now, this is... The, that the, thing's turned yellow. But the hairdo's back, the hairdo's back in style now. These are the hairdos you see in GQ, right? Gentlemen's Quarter, look at that. Now well, it's hard hey, to say hey. whether... <laughs> September? That is, 
1954, 34 <laughs> years ago almost. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's hard to say whether you're 30 years ahead of your time or 30 years behind. It. I don't know. <laughs> Everything comes around yeah. sooner or later. Yeah. Tell me about the new show. You play, as I understand it, in J.J. Starbuck, you play a, yeah, I guess, a, a billionaire. Right. Billion, millionaires are out with inflation. Billionaires yeah. are in. Yeah. <laughs> Who goes around? So... Yeah, what happened was his wife, he lost his wife and son in a plane crash. And he just never really went back to the office. He, he kind of rolled around in an automobile just about like I do now. You know, yeah. I've flown so many years that it's tired of flying. I love to drive. And so is old Starbuck. He rides around in his old Lincoln. And he's, like he says, he read every Perry Mason book that was ever written, every Charlie Chan book, uh, Sherlock Holmes. He's always been a student of criminology. And once in a while, he runs into a mystery. Yeah. And he goes poking his nose in where he's not wanted usually. But it's a nice character. I like, I like the show very much. And yeah. I hope people do. You're a natural actor. You're, you're a reactor, you, you listen, and you react. It seems to come fairly easy to you. Well, like I say, they're, they're, they're actors and their personalities. Motion pictures and television has usually been a business for personalities. And the difference, in my opinion, the way an actor can change himself to fit a role, mm -hmm. and a personality out of necessity must change the role to fit himself, you know. And I don't, I don't have the ability. Well, nobody ever asked me to play Shakespeare, and I wouldn't have done it anyway. They wouldn't let me ad lib, you know. <laughs> But I can hear you being doing to be or not to be. That is the question. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You and Clark Gable sound a lot alike. You ever, he, ever tell you that? Years ago, there was a little fella doing impressions. He said, he'd like to give my impression of Clark Gable. Frankly, Scarlett, I don't give a damn. <laughs> and they laugh. He said, now I'd like to give my impression of Robert Preston. Frankly, Scarlett, I don't give a damn. And then? Then now I'd like to give my impression of Dale Robertson. Frankly, Scarlett, I don't You're give right. a You're damn. You're right. You're all three alike, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. And we'll be right back in just a moment. <laughs> Come back. I hope the show, show up the show's a big hit for you. NBC thank, this thank Saturday night. Then it goes to Tuesdays, I guess. Yeah, Tuesdays. Uh, it, it was just at nine o'clock. Yeah, get off the ranch case and come out and say hi. Okay. Yeah. I'm humbled by that applause. <laughs>